welcome to Make Change Fun and Easy with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. This is the podcast to help change makers, coaches, trainers, and healers break your chains of fear so you can create the impact and income you desire with fun and ease. Please make sure you subscribe to enjoy every episode. This podcast is sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Hello, salam, shalom, namaste, sasrikal, aloha, hola, ciao, bonjour, buna, privyat, and mabale. It's so, so good to be with you again, and you will be so happy you're joining us today because we have such an amazing guest with us. I'm so excited to have uh, have her with us, and our guest today is Gunjani Patel. Welcome, Gunjani. I am so happy to be here, Samia. Thank you so much. Let's like, this is like one of the most unique in hellos I have ever heard in my podcasting. Uh, so I truly feel so excited and honored to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Do you have a particular way you love to say hello in your language? No, namaste goes with me. I, I normally tend to do the whole namaste thing because growing up in India. Nice. Yes. My life. So you covered it. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't know if I shared with you, I'm half Indian. And I actually lived in India for the first eight years of my life. So I have to represent our Indian. Yes, yes, you did. Yeah, I grew up there for 18 years. And my parents still live there. My whole family still lives there. So we go back and forth. But yeah, very proud to be one. Yeah, yeah. Ah. And actually, you know, it's very cool because part of what we will be talking about today will be about something that is really um, a big part of the Indian health and wellness uh, wisdom. So Mm -hmm. I'm extra excited to have you with us today for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I am super excited to be here. Thank you so much. So before we jump into that, I don't want to be too mysterious about it, but before we jump into it, Please, Kunjani, tell us more about who you are and what you do. Um, I have been, uh, I'm, first of all, I identify as a mom of one and I'm super excited to be there. I have, I have a toddler. I've been a licensed mental health therapist most of my life uh, for 15 years and over 15 years practicing and specializing in depression, anxiety, PTSD, grief, loss, addiction, and ADHD. Um, having been through a lot of that myself um, and generationally seeing that in my family, growing up, we did didn't really talk about mental health. We didn't talk about emotional health. I grew up in the 90s in India, so we didn't do that. So I made it my life's mission as I was healing my journey, as I was going through my healing journey to go out there and normalize mental health and emotional health and teach about it. Because I think when we are mentally and emotionally sound, we are happier, healthier, and we have fun in life. When we don't, then it gets dark. So um, along with that, I am also a holistic anxiety coach because I like to also coach people. One of the things that I found in my practicing with people, um, having dealt with so much trauma and a lot of subconscious modalities, I'm a certified hypnotherapist, I'm an EMDR therapist, I have all those subconscious and like NLP practitioner, I have, I I dealt with a lot of subconscious limiting beliefs and stuff that we hold in our system from our early childhood. So, you know, it became very important to me. I mean, and just it ended up so that I walked a lot of my clients from whatever they were going through in their lives, even those small T trauma, it didn't have to be big hardcore trauma, but small T trauma really has an impact on how we show up and, you know, like live our potential. And I ended up really, my in my own life thriving through all these conditions and you know yeah. post-traumatic growth that my trauma yeah. did you know, pull me back and it allows me to live and you know live the best life i'm capable of living so i truly enjoy helping people to not be limited by some of these experiences that we experience genetically they say that in the research world we say you know 
depression, anxiety, and trauma are 50% genetically predisposed, 40% mm. in our perception and our stories. And most of those stories we yeah. in the first five years of life when our brain is hardly developed, like just starting to develop at three, the prefrontal cortex, the left brain, and then it doesn't develop till 27. So I'm like, all these stories that we tell ourselves or all this conditioning that we put on ourselves through our upbringing, you know, I just really walking people through being on the other side of it and writing their own stories the way they want to and as they're capable of to create the life that they wish they love living and showing up to and have fun with. So uh, your part absolutely amazing that it's like very much in alignment with what I do and how I show up and how I walk my clients through. Yeah, yeah. You know, touching back to the idea of our Indian roots uh, you're so right like when I lived in India by the way I've also lived in Pakistan and I've lived in the Middle East mm. and now of course here I am in America and I will say in India in Pakistan and even in the Middle East uh, when I lived there so maybe it's like an Asian culture thing ah. uh, more generally that yeah. people don't talk about mental health they d- just don't and it's like so there you know this has become like one of those um issues for me in terms of when i'm dealing with people in our community where uh, you know like people have suffered through all kinds of trauma in their lives you know they don't parents and stuff they've been through hard yes. work Oh my gosh. And and there's also by the way a lot I see a lot of mental and emotional abuse uh that goes on in our communities and it's not even recognized. Like people don't even recognize that it's mental emotional abuse that they are experiencing that they are subjecting other people to is just all normalized as oh it's just how people are and you just you know don't and i know this is well even if this is how people are it doesn't have to be 100% no it's so true how people are hey thanks for tuning into this episode hope you're getting value out of it for your information this episode has been sponsored by the happiness 101 program Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back from making the impact and income you desire? Using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom of our most effective change makers, the Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs. and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease interested book a free happiness 101 exploration call with me your happiness expert samya vano just use my online calendar link in the show notes now back to the show I started doing this work is when i started to focus on my nervous system, my emotional health, that feeling emotions was not, especially when I became a mom four years ago, because I was like, we didn't get taught all these emotional intelligence tools. And now being also being a trauma informed certified breathwork practitioner, I am very big on, you know, really mind body connection and really one of the things i think as us we did in the asian culture and just i think mostly i work with high performers um uh, you know and my biggest thing is like helping high performers not live a life without anxiety and overwhelm most of the time we're into achieving 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 and then we get burnt out or we're unhappy or don't feel fulfilled and we're so in our head and intellectualized whereas yeah. our human experience we're meant to feel our feelings and work through yes. that learn from them but we yes. can so yeah and the idea of the mind body connection cuz i'm also seeing this a lot in 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 the people around me yeah. is that people don't realize how much your mental health impacts your physical health 
I, I see so much focus in our community on physical health, yeah. especially because you know we have such rich traditions like Ayurveda. Mm. You know, um, and yeah. it's very ironic to me because you know if you look at the uh, tradition of Ayurveda, mm. actually it's a very very holistic system. It's a very very holistic yeah. system. If you if you if you understand and you the 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 wholeness of ayurveda it's like a lifestyle and there's so much uh that it teaches that actually is about cultivating more inner peace and happiness and calmness in your life you know it's like mental health um there is a huge focus on mental health but we don't we don't um oftentimes get so- taught about that part of you know our tradition of healing and all the focus is on oh when you feel some pain in your body then here's you know a um, uh, a mixture of herbs that you can eat right 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 and a lot of those and more physical like the pain and the physical things that we experience is a result it's like our nervous system is not just in our brain and our head it is 10,000 miles worth of nerves across the body yes. determines how we show up and what we feel in our so our brain is i don't want to go to unless you want me to you know our brain there is a part of our brain the right hemisphere we call it the which is emotions feelings sensations they get stuck in our body if we suppress them if press them if we deny them if we avoid them over time so it's like oh we need to we need to be happy or get over it or you know those strong emotional feelings that we experience get stuck in our body that then show up as pain so a yeah. lot of times that pain can be easily released by feeling the feelings instead of suppressing yeah. And yeah. it's scary for people to feel pain because of their relationship with pain and that's why it's easy yeah. to go to someone and speak about it or work through that pain or that fear or whatever anger or whatever it is that is coming up for you and deal with it by feeling it as opposed to talking about it or i i i know a lot of my clients will come to me and they will try to intellectualize it and i did that most of my life i just you know yeah. talk myself out of my feelings and that it's so mentally exhausting it takes forever it's very hard because <sighs> Do everything to not feel them. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. You know that was also my tendency uh, to mm-hmm. inter inter in, in. intellectualize. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh good. Oh. <laughs> to intellectualize uh, my feelings because you're right. I mean, my biggest problem. growing up was i had no idea how to cope with my emotions no idea and i was constantly in this avoidance mode and um, I, i mean it's like a blessing and a curse when you have a brilliant brain i mean not to toot my own horn but i have a really good brain that's awesome yeah. and uh, you know no i i mean i'm smart you know and so it's like really easy for me to intellectualize and i often time you know um uh, like um, people are always were always giving me feedback about how smart they thought i was mm-hmm. and how insightful my comments were on this or that subject i remember uh, a, a conversation in particular uh where there was a bunch of us cousins uh we were maybe in our early teens at that time we were sitting around uh, and there were some adults present and we were having like a family chat and so the uh, one of my uncles he brought up some question that he posed to all of us kids and he was like okay so now i want to hear from you what do you think about this and one by one all of us cousins gave our answers and then when after i had given mine he was like oh and i mean i probably shouldn't have done this <laughs> but he started comparing me to my other cousins and i i think he was just trying to you know encourage me and uh, and be like ah oh, sound you give such an amazing answer and so much uh, so deep and insightful and this and that 
you know, and this was like a fairly common experience for me in terms of people commenting on how intelligent and smart I am. Yeah. And so I I took that on, you know, uh, and I was like, okay, I'm smart, I'm intelligent. And certainly I was terrible at dealing with my emotions. Right. So I was like just pushing pushing that away. And um so it it just for me became really easy to be like, no, you know, I'm smart. That's my strength. I'll just keep focusing on that. But it's not enough. It's not mm-hmm. enough. And and uh, more than enough, it's it it's it doesn't complete the cycle of the sensation yeah. when we experience feelings. It's like yeah. we we our brain is designed we make meaning of it later we feel things first through our senses all five of our senses so it's very important that you know when we experience those sensations they get a chance to be released otherwise it gets stuck in our muscular memory it gets stuck in our cellular memory then found over the years of working with people it it just turns up in volume and one of the things is what we do is we either intellectualize it and not feel it and thus or avoid it and like not think about it or distract ourselves yeah. at school and do all the things that we do and <clears throat> as a result if you don't have the tools we the the volume on that pain gets uh, mm. higher over time yeah. when because we only uh, start paying attention to things when it shows up as physical symptoms so i've treated a lot yeah. of people autoimmune conditions, a lot of chronic pain, I guess, you know, like all the nervous system, PCOS, all the thyroid and cortisol and hormonal issues. Partially, all of that was related to emotional, lack of emotional intelligence and not having emotional resilience, not having a way to live a balanced work life, life, or work and life being equally balanced. It was either all work and stress and overwhelm or, or at home without giving your body and your brain a chance to, you know, um, settle yeah. in, be balanced. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so talking about having tools and ways to give our brain a chance to settle in and, you know, um, I know one of the things that you teach yeah. um, that I would love to learn more about from you is breath work. So first of all, tell me more for people in our audience who are unfamiliar with the idea of breath work. What is breath work? Um, thank you for asking this question. I love this question because it's like I personally, even being raised in India and knowing all the things, like I knew the basic pranayam that, you know, the left nostril breathing and then letting it out through your right nostril. The breath work is a practice that I heard a lot about um, a few years ago on the internet, actually, where everybody on the social media was talking about breath work, breath work, breath work. And I'm like, what is this tool? Then being tra- trauma informed and very heavily, very big on, you know, walking my clients through a gentle and a safe, you know, trauma experience, healing experience. When I heard about this tool, it's almost like I called it in, like I manifested it because I was really looking for a tool where <clears throat> in 1999, uh, 2019, I was going through a lot of postpartum anxiety and burnout for, I had a newborn, I had a ma, like a mother-in-law who was also in a wheelchair. So I had a lot of caregiving. I was doing a lot of caregiving without taking care of myself. I was just literally pouring from an empty bucket back then, self-care didn't even occur to me. and. As a result, I really felt so burned out and I was like, okay, I need to go to a therapist, but I would make up all these stories. I don't know if I have enough money to do it because I had really scaled back my practice and I was doing part time. And then I would be like, oh, I don't know if I have enough time. I don't know if I'll find the right person. I don't know, you know, all the stories that we tell ourselves that. And as a result, it was just one of those things that this tool came to me and I really started diving into it. Breath work is basically using conscious intentional breathing techniques and patterns there are different patterns that do different things there are different breathing patterns that get you energized more than a cup of coffee there are different breathing patterns that you can use to really calm and settle down and release stress there are different breathing patterns that you can use to 
And again, it's like, I don't know if you're used to a tool called emotional freedom technique. It's like a tapping technique. You tap and you release. It's like it comes from, you know, the the idea of acupressure and cognitive psychology where you think and you say words yeah. and you tap. And basically the this ancient practice, these the breath work is considered, it's not something new. It's just been finally now in yoga, we do breathing all the time, right? Yeah. The, yeah, is to connect your mind to your body and release consciously all the stress, all the emotions, all the things that are not serving you intentionally by yeah. changing the time, the techniques, the different patterns that you use that result in different things in terms of your nervous system and your body. So there are different things we use when we are in that fight mode in terms of, you know, stress or trauma response. We, there are different things we use when we're in flight mode when we're anxiety and in our heads and overthinking and ruminating and really stressed and almost like leaving our body when we are almost so overwhelmed in our system. There are different techniques used when we are in freeze response, which is, you know, you want to do all these things, but you have no energy or exhausted or almost depressed and mel melancholy and can't even move. So yeah. our breath is so powerful that e it's like a life force that we use consciously to change our emotional state and our nervous system reg down regulation. Yes. Yes. You know, it was such a profound thing for me to understand also you know it, i also did not recognize or realize or learn about uh breath work in detail i mean i knew one or two breathing techniques mm -hmm. growing up uh in practice of yoga and so forth mm -hmm. but there's so much like you were saying when jenny where there's different techniques to help you achieve different goals yeah. When I actually started learning about it in a systematic way, yeah. there's even a technique that you can use to get, it basically has the impact of a high intensity cardio workout. 100%. You know? Absolutely. It's I mean, like amazing. outrageous how much, like when people say I don't have energy, that perplexes my mind at this point because of doing this for three years and teaching it and all the things. It's like I, I I truly have gotten to a place of and I teach my clients this, too. So it's like even they very in a very short period of time, it's when you can't come to me and say, I don't have energy. I can literally teach you if you want to. That's like literally in your next breath. We, we breathe 22 to 40, 24,000 breaths a day. I mean, imagine we were consciously breathing how fast we can switch our state from going through, oh, I feel, you know, no energy and exhaustion, or I don't feel good, or I'm burnt out, or I feel so, uh, you know, uh, uh, wired all the time that I just want to relax and ground and be peaceful and not be in my head. You literally can do that with the power of your breath. Um, yes. That's in less than five seconds, actually, if you do yeah. it right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And one of the things that I love so much about how I've experienced breath work is that like for someone like me who was so like prone to over just intellectualizing things mm -hmm. and uh, you know, sometimes it's actually to, to get to the deeper aspects of what we need to release and heal if if you're doing it from up here or even in the context of talk therapy it can yep. take such a long time yes. to even figure out you know what what's at the root of what i'm i'm feeling and then to release it um it, it can take a really long time and it can feel really hard and no yep. fun I agree. I totally. <laughs> Since we are on a podcast, it's about fun. I'm hundred percent. Exactly. Agree. I am. But yeah. And have been so not served by talk therapy alone. Yeah. You know, talk therapy is important. It raises awareness. But then what? Like I, I have a lot of clients that come to me that to go, hey, uh, we tried the talk therapy. I know what I need, but in the moment, my mind just takes over. And most of our, 95% of our mind is a subconscious mind. So that's the part that keeps rolling. And with breath work, you can actually yeah. read conscious mind 
in less than 60 minutes in one session and it's yeah. so bad. you yeah. know telling i've done this in therapy for 10 months and literally in one 60 minute meditative session i was able to literally shift my transform yeah. what i've trying to transform through talking and through verbalizing exactly. and exactly the way you can just let go Oof, let go so much <sighs> just letting go just through breathing consciously ah uh, yeah it, it's so much more easy <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> like just remind <sighs> take a breath because when we are yeah. white we don't we take shallow breaths we don't breathe or we almost sometimes we don't even realize if we're breathing or we are paying attention to our breaths we just breathe from up here above your throat and that's it has to be all the way into your diaphragm and deep yeah. sometimes it doesn't have to be even deep it's just the way a reminder to breathe and regulating yeah. the intentionality of it makes a huge yeah. impact it does it, it regulates and and for, like for me i just keep coming back to how amazed i always am by how much because you know i i had uh, you know fallen for this um like in traditional therapy i mean in in the western context you know traditionally they weren't familiar with things like breath work you know and so the idea was and i i i believed it uh for a long time was that in order for me to release any hard emotion or you know trauma that i'm carrying etc i have to talk through it 100%. and that was the only way that i knew you know so and that's most people know right and yeah. it's just for those of us that it, when it doesn't work when that doesn't work when it feels hard and you know then it is just so discouraging yeah. and and so that's why i was just i just keep feeling so amazed i never cease to feel amazed by how much i am able to just let go through breath work through breathing without so it's like you don't always have to consciously bring up things in order to release them you can just release things and just just let it go and, and just have it be gone and you even if you didn't understand what just happened what you let go it's okay yes no that's so true. If you said you know earlier and we're so used to especially in the western world we do two things so much where especially people who are high performers or people who are high achievers and in, in you know high functioning anxiety even though it's not an official diagnosis it's like people experience high functioning anxiety and it shows up as people pleasing not being able to set boundaries it shows up as perfectionism it shows up as instead of healthy through striving it's like am i good enough you know like i need to be perfect before I start. it shows up as imposter syndrome who am i to do anything you know it shows up as lack of work life balance it shows up as pain and burnout in our systems it's like you were saying we're so used to just doing doing going all the time you know and un- unfortunately some people get to the place of just doing so much that they have a hard time just relaxing and being and we get to a place where we dysregulate our nervous system so much that it almost like that becomes our norm that's what becomes our baseline for some of us and i i was there for that like like i was telling you earlier i was just pouring 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 doing it's almost like i couldn't be because i was in that fight nervous system all the time that i had to go 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 and i had such a hard time is sitting and being and chilling which i 100% prioritize at this point so that i can show up more efficiently from a state of flow from not being so distracted and everywhere and very focused and breath it's like i have been a meditator for almost a decade but in the beginning meditation didn't work for me because i couldn't even be still so breath work mm. helped me get my body to just seriously slow my body down and 
feel almost that massage, that relaxing in my head because I used to get a lot of headaches. I would experience like symptoms as a result of my anxiety. I didn't really couldn't sleep. And then I was also breastfeeding at the time. So it's like I couldn't sleep and then the anxiety went up and the anxiety went up. So I couldn't sleep. So it's like even though I was so tired, I could, you know, I was my nervous yeah. system was regulated and brought yeah. to work literally allowed me to not even think not make meaning and like one of the first things that i prep yeah. people for in terms of you know when we do breathwork sessions is like emotions will show up as humans we're meaning making machines we have to figure out where it came from why are we feeling why am i crying i shouldn't be crying like don't make any stories just feel let it go feel, let it go yeah. whatever needs to come up you don't need to figure out where it came from what is doing what is happening none of that don't stay in your cognitive yeah. brain just let it, yes. let it go it is so cathartic that people yes. express improve sleep like their pain goes away there it's like sometimes people would tell me i had all this neck pain and oh my god it's almost gone and i've been experiencing it for years and my range of motion has improved like some people would tell me oh i had all this lower back pain some people would tell me i had so much procrastination that i used to do before i knew i had to do it but i couldn't because there was all this fear and dysregulation yeah. and that I just now I'm very focused. I've released so much and this literally can happen in one or two sessions. It's so powerful, yeah. but we have to yeah. train our brain, our body and our nervous system. To be yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, I think, um, you know, like globally we had this experience as, as a human species where you know, we, we sort of overcorrected, like, uh, you know, for ah. century, for millil, millil, no, for thousands of years, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, um, the, the very idea of science and scientific method and all, I mean, it, first of all, it was um, applied in very limited context. And especially in the context of health and healing, no one even thought about it. And as we have, you know, in the last century or two or three, uh, been, uh, you know, been influenced by the industrial revolution and this and that. And there's more and more focus on, okay, science and ev scientific evidence. And uh, we have just become more and more mind centered in yes. the way that we live and understand everything and we sort of overcorrected in that direction where we have forgotten the other parts of us yes the body like literally <laughs> the body where we are housed you know and it's like yeah. there's so much like and I, I'm happy to see that these days the circles that I hang out in, the people that I hang out with are so into the somatic work because I'm like, oh my God, this helps me connect back to my roots and what I've always yeah. known as a kid, but didn't know the depth of what it did and why it did certain things, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just so beautiful to see that in the past three years in my own life, I was like, I went from completely being so tethered and easily like not emotional resilient at all to now being so resilient and being able to have control over my emotions as opposed to the other way around, me trying to control everybody else around me because I didn't feel safe in my body. I didn't even know what that felt like, you know? But a lot of times when I'll breed people for the first time, they're like, wow. My, I walked out and like there was a client of mine, she was like, I walked out of my session and my husband is like, wow you look so peaceful she's like sometimes we don't even realize that we're in this fight or flight and that's become our natural state you know and yeah it's sad yeah it, it's just normalized right it's just normalized because that's the dominant experience of most people uh, in in our current cultural reality and yeah. so you you just think that's the way it is and yeah. that's how the, I, I, uh, I'm remembering now a, a conversation I was at a conference and there was like two, three ladies uh, we were chatting about, uh, oh, what do you do? What do you do? And so then I, when it was my turn, I was like, I'm a health expert. Yeah. And one of the things that I was sharing is that, you know, 
uh, for me, uh, being a happiness expert, the the and and what I try, to, uh, what I'm all about teaching my clients is about taking control of your mental emotional wellness so that you can choose to be happy no matter what. You know, and happiness is a skill that we it's a muscle we have to flex. It's not like all of a sudden we're just yes. happy all the time if we don't yeah. experience the range of emotions if we don't experience sadness if we don't allow ourselves to experience the pain we can't feel happy we can act happy yes feel it. yes and the you know but the thing is like when i when i say the part about i absolutely agree with you about feeling our emotion and but and when i say to people and you can choose to be happy no matter what there's yeah. like a misunderstanding that people fall into that they're thinking that i'm saying that you're not allowed to feel sad or <laughs> angry or this or that and no that's not what it means right what i mean is that you feel i mean i'd be the last person to ever tell anyone to suppress any of their feelings or deny any of their feelings but it's about recognizing the function that your your feelings have we're not meant to stay in anger we're not meant to stay in sadness or anxiety long term you know these feelings are like alarm bells that are meant to just alert us to hey there's something wrong and please pay attention fix it Thank you. you my reply. And for me too, right? There I used to spend months and days and sometimes years in the the anxiety and the worry and the constant what's going to happen, what's going to happen because anxiety was is still sometimes a big part of my life. And now I just know that you know what? Every moment gives me a choice to feel differently. I have yes. the power to control how I feel. If I don't like yes. feeling what I feel, I give myself yes. I mean it's to dwell on it to feel it be in it to uh, really just feel it and then yeah it's gone it's not a part of my yeah. experience it doesn't define me anymore because the right tapping into is the joy is the bliss yeah. is the right is the exactly and so then we come back to breath work because when you want to make that choice when you are ready to shift out of the um negative feelings i would say that in quotes yeah. <laughs> uh you know so when you're ready to shift out of those states that we're not meant to be in long term it's like the question always arises about well, how do you do that in a way that's healthy where you're not denying and suppressing and any of that uh stuff that you don't want to do uh and so that's where breath work you know is like a amazing tool that we can step in with absolutely i i i truly it has absolutely to say that it has transformed my life is an understatement it's like literally i went from because i'm like oh breathe breath work i i breathe well it's much deeper than i breathe you know yeah <laughs> because yeah. The, the it's like there there's a whole science to how it switches yeah. how that level of oxygen can literally wake your brain up to literally it does different things yeah. and like literally just becoming aware and setting i always tell people because we are so into the intellectual and the conscious mind you know it's like breathe in what you want and breathe out what you don't want so seven uh-huh. yeah. i am so if you want to feel happy and if you don't like what you're feeling there are also different breaths that you can use for anger there are different breaths that you can use for different things but for example if you're finding yourself in this frustration we have we do what this what we call a snake breath so you close your mouth and just sort of hiss all that air out but you breathe in i am happy or i am safe to feel because a lot of times people in the beginning i'll have people yeah. do safety because we don't even know what to feel yeah. what it feels like to be safe and sometimes yeah. safe If you went through a lot of emotional or verbal abuse in your life, you don't know what it feels like to be safe and that's foreign. Even though yeah. cognitively, like consciously, it sounds like, oh, of course safety should be normal. But if if it's not familiar to our body, it it is perceived as danger and threat. So it's like, uh, oh, sometimes for people who have been through a lot of trauma or who have been through a lot of abuse, it doesn't feel yeah. safe. It has yeah. to be gently sipped and titrated. So we say, okay, you yeah. breathe is safe to feel whatever it is 
and then you it's safe to feel angry because a lot of us were not taught to feel angry and healthy anger you know we just projected yeah. our anger other people start yelling, raised our voice, you know, or just completely shut down and anger turned inwards is depression. So it's like yeah. say angry and you just hiss all that air out because and there's a whole somatic reasoning behind that. It's like, you know, as animals, the when uh let's say uh, if a duck was getting chased by someone, it'll if it outchases anything, its threat, it'll go on the other side and just flap all its you know, feathers and yeah. then equilibrium a gazelle mm -hmm. in a jungle if it was chased by a cheetah and if it, it outruns it it'll go on the side it'll run around a few times and release all that adrenaline and that stress mm -hmm. as animals we are meant to release all the stress all the overwhelm all yeah. the carried all throughout the day but most of the yeah. time it you know cognitively it's like yes i sent 100 emails yeah. a day but in terms of your body in terms of your right brain the sensations of yeah. that are very overwhelming and um, yeah. stressful to your body and if we're not yeah. connected to our body then it's very hard for us to release because then of course at the end of the night or by friday we are tgifing like i never say tgif because i'm like i get to feel the way i want to yeah. feel every moment of my life if i am yeah. feeling a certain way that is absolutely on me and nobody can change that. So I don't want to wait till Friday to release all this stuff. I want to release it now. Today, I, I have people take yeah. every two to three hours. Like, hey, yeah. go to the bathroom and just release all that stress. Do five minutes of breathing in, sipping at the top, and long exhale. That, mm. if you literally, in it'll if you do four or five of those, it reduces 70, according to studies, 75% of your stress. It's so yeah. easy, but you just have to be very yeah. mindful and pleasant. When yeah. you're so feeling fear, anxiety is felt fear in our body. Just feel it and release it intentionally. If you're releasing fear, what's the opposite of yeah. fear? I am harmonious or I am peaceful. Mm. I am calm. Breathe that in <sighs> and let out all the fear. Keep breathing that in, keep letting it out. Eventually, yeah. in five minutes, you will not even realize that's that's the power of sending intentional oxygen to your brain yes yes and this point that you made Benjani, about people not even realizing or recognizing that they don't feel safe in their own bodies oh i i've had that issue i i've personally you know, in fact, until like two or three years ago, I didn't even realize that that was the one of the deepest issues that I was holding on to. I, even after years of doing all kinds of trauma healing, mm -hmm. I was continuing to hold on to this belief deep down that mm -hmm. I'm not safe. Yeah. And... Uh, didn't even recognize that. Didn't 100%. even recognize it. But it shows up in you know in your life in all kinds of ways. Like for me, um, for example, um, it would show up in the context of my starting to worry about how my business was doing, you know, and not growing fast enough or not making enough money, things like that. And you're like, oh well, I mean and on the one hand it's like such a normal anxiety or stress for people to feel that oh because if you don't make enough money you know yep yep but it, 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 it's like a safety issue at the core you know it's that it, it's what? not just, no go but, yeah yeah no it yeah, I, I did not recognize it as a core safety issue. I didn't. Because it's just such a normalized experience in our society. So It's so true because we don't talk about safety, right? Like we don't feel, if we don't feel the safety, like right now, right? If you checked in with your body, does it feel completely safe? Right? If I check in with my body right now, 80, I'm at an 85% right now. 
So it's like, you know, like I really tell people to be honest with themselves because when you know, then you know what it what it should feel like, right? Like what what do you like? What feeling safe feels like? Because if we felt safe, when we feel safe in our body, we can be still, we can be in the very moment, right this moment. Yeah. We don't feel the need to escape the moment. We don't need yeah. to we we don't have thoughts about the past and the worries and the constant overwhelm and the rumination and obsession is just clear there's nothing there yeah. because it's so that's always so true that's that, so true go ahead. and the other thing that i've experienced when i'm feeling very very safe oh. is i mean in addition to being present in the moment so i don't have to be doing this that or anything but there's it also lights up the amazing sense of confidence yeah in me. that yeah. if i did want to do something anything yeah i know it's like no problem yeah. it's like i can do whatever i want and i'm yeah. totally safe to do it you know yeah. and so you have like it's like no fear that you, like and you just and 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 with and, and so it's not just the confidence then you know underlying the confidence is actually the sense of immense joy yes cuz you know you're you're safe yeah you're free and yeah. it's like you comfortable you're confident you're just joyful yeah. you know yeah <sighs> it's so true that's that's one of the most common things i hear people say after they walk out of a breathwork session it's like you know when you come in you don't really realize what your body is doing if you're not used to being in your body and have that level of body awareness or haven't looked into it or know what that is and like you were saying in terms of the face safety like for me having endured trauma and just really suppressing it over the years and I, you know all the things i didn't realize that i was not safe but the way it showed up in my behaviors was like when i'm not safe these days i'm in my head a lot i uh i don't i normally i'm very full of laugh and fun and i love you know just humor um yeah serious is when i know i'm not safe in my body or what it's mm-hmm. when i'm worrying like fear anxiety equals fear held in our body so the answer to fear is safety and yeah. felt and or gratitude when you feel gratitude and <sighs> when you're so in this moment mm-hmm. your head is clear you're just appreciative of this moment that is here right this second yes yeah you know what you just reminded me of another way in which a uh, lack of feeling safe would show up in my uh, life and uh, you know even now mm-hmm. even now it's just that now i'm aware of it so now when it shows up i know what's going on yeah. but before i didn't realize um was having issues with authority figures and just yeah cuz i'm also you know a survivor of sexual abuse so you know of course um you know i developed a lot of issues with power and control yeah yeah and um it, you know the thing about uh the, the when you are traumatized by an experience of abuse and you develop mm-hmm. issues with power and control it doesn't just stay consta- constrained to one context of your life it's 100%. like everywhere in all aspects of your life you know these uh tendencies show up and so for example i would have um any time i thought somebody was like telling me what to do like ordering me it, it would immediately sort of uh create the sense of resistance in me that i don't want to be told what to do i don't want to be ordered into things um and very very um difficult thing to experience especially as an indian person mm-hmm. because in yeah, our my- culture yes yes very patriarchal system it's always about you do what i say you know and it's like uh, yes. i have to abide by those rules especially at any yes. point you know yeah you know and and also the younger person because in our culture like 
you know, definitely as a woman, you know, you're expected to take on subordinate positions. But also as a younger person, you know, you're expected to listen to anyone who's yes. older than you. Yes. And so I had like so much conflict in my life happening all the time because of this one, one problem that I had that I didn't want to be told what to do, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, my defense mechanism was this sense of like, um, you know, I took on this attitude of, of I value independence, I value my freedom, and that's why I have a problem with authority and being told <laughs> what to do. But actually underlying that was the trauma and uh, the fear, you know, of someone who has power over me being able to hurt me, right? And so I didn't, the, here's another way that I didn't realize uh, that th- I, I was feeling unsafe and yeah. I didn't recognize it was an issue of feeling unsafe. 100%. You know, I'm also IFS trained and IFS is like internal family systems and they we in that um, modality, they do a lot of parts work. And the, the theory is that it's like, you know, if you've heard of inner child work, basically it's and it's 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 related to that where <clears throat> if at any point in our life like we come into this world fully whole and loved and compassionate and just abundant and carefree right and then conditioning happens things happen trauma happens parents happen and especially in our parents generation they did the best as they could as they knew how and um it, it had an impact in the way they parented us right so it's like now we know through studies over the years that conscious parenting is now happening where it's like, you know, the way I was parented was I brought you into this world, you do as I say, and it's almost like I'm not your object, but that's what it felt like. But it was like just very obedient parenting, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And again, I I love my parents, but that's what was happening in that era. So now that I'm, I am a parent and I raised my child consciously and I was like, no, they get to have a say, even if they're five. And even though I disagree with that, and even though it brings up my big big feelings, like we just had a thing this morning (laughs) about it. And he's like, sorry, mommy, to stress you. And I'm like, no, baby, my stress is mine to handle. Your stress is yours to handle. So you're not responsible for my stress, but it was just, you know, stuff so anyways i was we weren't parented like that so the idea the theory behind the the ifs is that when we are hurt even once so let's say there's a part of us that worries or there's a part of us that felt unworthy worthy or there's a part of us that didn't feel safe or there's a part of us that felt abandoned or there's a part of us that felt rejected or not good enough or not loved or inadequate or unimportant or any of those things right then in that moment what we needed was our emotional needs were we needed connection we needed to not feel alone we validated we needed to be loved and comforted and soothed and just safe felt safe safe in the well our parents didn't know that so then we built protectors and our protectors were we built you know that a hyper independence where it's like I don't need help from anybody else for me that was a protector for the longest time where yeah. I was just so independent that and it was just a trauma response that even when I should have asked for help or even when I should have co-regulated with someone like hey I'm not feeling well can you co-regulate with me without telling me what to do just be there for me and just tell me that I see you I hear you I'm here to hold space I'm just here with you till as long as you need me we didn't get that so we built those protectors as a way to feel safe in our body, to feel yeah. not overwhelmed by those emotions. Yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> we live in the okay, You know, uh, you keep bringing out things. I want to dig deeper, deeper, and <laughs> I know we'll run out of time. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, we can we can keep talking, but how about we just do some experience thing? And you already shared. Uh, some techniques but maybe we can just take a few minutes now not too long but a few minutes and just experience some breathing some breath work okay so just closing down your eyes or just softening your gaze just getting in this moment not trying to get rid of anything and just doing an entire body scan taking your first breath just breathing in and breathing in it is safe to feel so just breathing in yeah 
with three. And six second exhale. It is safe to let go. Breathing in, release. Breathing in, letting your body be in charge. Whatever feels good to your body. If you need to speed it up, you I'm Q number two. Just speed it up. In through your nose, top it up at the top. Exhale, long exhale out. Breathing in, it is safe to be in this moment. You have nowhere else to be sending your breath to any part of your body that needs a little more nourishing in this moment. Shaking off anything, if that feels good, massaging any part of you, getting in your body and really breathing in and holding your breath at the top in your next inhale. Breathing in a biggest breath of the day and holding up top till as long as your body allows and releasing and holding at the bottom letting all that energy from your head go into the earth letting all that energy and releasing into the earth you're held, you're supported, and you're safe to feel in this moment. Doing a couple more breaths. Whenever you're ready to release. It is safe to feel. Anything and everything you feel in this moment and letting go of everything that keeps you from the happiness, from the peace, from the joy, from the bliss. Just emptying out everything that is not yours to hold on to. Coming back to your body Maybe putting your hands on your heart, connecting to the source energy, God, universe, inner knowing, your power. And noticing what is here now in this moment. Bliss, joy, and peace are in our natural states. Anxiety, fear, worries, doubts, and unhappiness are not. Just really noticing where you feel the most connected with yourself and taking that with you and remembering to do this practice as many times as you need to change your emotional state. Thanking yourself for being here, for getting in your body, for trying something new. And just opening your eyes when you're ready. Thank you so much for that, Kenjin. Oh, I'm feeling happy for that one. Also, there's like a extra layer of calmness underneath the happiness and joy. Right? <sighs> yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I actually feel physically cooler also. Right? <laughs> They say, you know, when we do these breath practices, we experience all these changes in our temperature. Sometimes when people experience dizziness, tingling, all the things, it's because of the changes in the oxygen and the carbon dioxide in the brain and the body. 
so it all goes away and the body knows how to come come back to equilibrium but we experience temperature shifts as a result of just letting go of this stagnant emotional energy or just stagnant stressful overwhelm from our body uh, yeah okay so i think it's time for us to wrap up any last words from you um i love what you're doing i absolutely am so thrilled to be here thank you so much for having me here i just want more and more people to hopefully this was helpful for your audience and everybody that is listening sending you so much love so much abundance so much light so much joy in your life and i just really hope that you can uh i know this would be just scratch the tip of the iceberg but i hope that you can use this practice every so often in your day and just be reminded of just taking a deep breath just pausing whatever you are doing and just getting in your body and over time it can have a huge impact in the way you show up in your business in the way you show up in your life in the way you release things and shed things based on you know what is not serving you and stepping in into your new reality it's like i always tell people if you don't want to live a life of worrying and anxiety then you need to know what the version of you that doesn't feel that is living as and when you build those neural connections it's like every thought we think is a neural connection every feeling we feel is a deeper neural connection so tap into that version don't spend time thinking about what is not serving you instead shift the momentum to who you are becoming and learning to do that through consciously breathing in a 100%. wonderful wonderful amazing way and uh, my last reminder to everyone who's listening and watching is to please make sure you check the show notes because i will be dropping some jenny's links there So you can connect with her and learn even more from her because remember we just scratched the surface over here and uh other than that until we connect next time i wish you lots and lots of peace and joy Thank you.